So if you were, like me, kind of curious about the weather, um, oftentimes you'll find yourself looking at weather maps. And oftentimes superimposed on these weather maps are these contour lines. Contour lines are great at showing at a glance throughout the United States, if you're looking at a, a map of the United States, where, um, where are the hot spots? What's the temperature doing across the United States? Um, where another type of contour uh, map can show us all at once where are the pressures high, a barometric pressure contour map. And contour maps are very similar to, and I'm going to think I'm going to kind of kind of show you um, an example here. They're very similar to um, if you've done much with topography, kind of showing elevation. For instance, if this is a mountain, um, and I want to use a create a topographic map of that mountain, I could like look down on that mountain and I could draw what we call contour lines. I'm going to kind of draw some. Those lines right here are connecting locations at the same elevation. I'm going to go down here to kind of it bottoms out, right? So if I were to um, draw a contour map, what I do is um, bird's eye view would look like this, where this would be my highest, the top of my mountain. Okay, these contour lines are all drawing locations that are at the same elevation. And then, of course, I need to kind of identify what each contour line is. So, for instance, I don't know if this is at um, 1,000 uh, meters above sea level. This would be stepping down, so it looks like maybe this could be at 900. Okay, this could be at 800. In this case, each one of my contour lines is stepping down 100 meters in elevation. Okay, so those are contour lines. And we do the same thing then, um, connecting um, locations with the same um, atmospheric, for a given atmospheric condition, that same um, temperature or the same barometric pressure, um, that sort of thing. So in um, meteorology, when you're looking at weather maps, um, and they are they're drawing contour lines on the weather map um, connecting locations with the same temperature we call those contour lines isotherms um, if those lines are connecting locations with the same barometric pressure we call those isobars for barometric pressure if those lines are connecting locations with the same wind speed we call those isotacks now, just like in the previous, uh, just like in my example, I had to show that um, one contour line was 1,000 meters above sea level, followed by outside of that decreasing elevation, 900 meters above sea level, 800 meters above sea level. These contour lines need to be um, either directly labeled or you need to be able to kind of infer um, what they are. So isotherms, isobars, isotacks, would connect lines of equal temperature, pressure, and wind speed. So we use the generic name isopleth for connecting lines of any particular atmospheric variable. Um, so one of the things, and this will be important when we, this is important, if you glance at a, at a, at a weather map and you happen to see um, relatively tight spaced uh, contour lines. That means that as you go out to a different location, you have a drastic change in that particular parameter, whether that is uh, wind speed, whether that is temperature, it's a fast drop. The kind of the, the, um, the, the spacing between these gradient lines, excuse me, the spacing between those iso, isopleth lines is called the gradient. Uh, compare that to what if I had contour lines like this. Okay, that means I could go quite a ways and be have kind of a gentle um, grade to the next temperature, the next pressure, the next wind speed. So um, some figures from your textbook. This is showing you since chapter two is talking about temperature. These lines are isotherm lines, and I don't know if you can see. Uh, for instance, that has 20 on it. Those would be uh, temperature in, in units of Celsius. So 20 degrees Celsius is what's lying on that line. 
Now, if I want to know what's inside the line, with what's inside that isotherm, if I, to me, if I go to look at the contour line outside of it, it's 30. So this must be um, uh, getting colder, uh, or relatively cold, and it's getting warmer as you go out. Um, so those are isotherms. Um, and this is another way to, uh, not as specific, but can you see where the color now is, differenti dif is, is showing you the different, um, the, the main in, in sets of 10, the different temperatures. Um, so I thought I would take you right quick to um, a website. Um, one of my favorite websites for weather maps is IntelliCast.com. Outer the national, you have an assortment of choices, but I'm going to go to under national, I'm going to go to surface analysis, and I'm going to go to uh, mixed. Surface analysis, mixed surface analysis. And you might uh, right off the bat see where, why it's mixed. Maybe you would or wouldn't. It's, if they call it mixed because, frankly, the information on this map comes from an assortment of sources. Um, the, you might see the milky white cloud. That comes from satellites um, in general. Um, you can maybe kind of see some green here. That would be precipitation. We know that precipitation is there from ground radar. Okay. Um, and what, uh, what maps, mixed maps like this have is, and I don't know if you can see it, but they do have these lines here. Those are isopleths, that's the generic term, and they are connecting locations with the same barometric pressure. And right here, what IntelliCast has done has the number 1016. And so that line, in, in the, the pressure for that line is uh, 1016 millibars. So how, that's how that works. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at um, temperature. So we have wind, um, isopleths, temperature, current temperatures. And they've gone with the color coding, kind of like we saw before. So. The other thing, and I won't take too much of your time, but I thought this was really neat. Um, I, I found on the internet a site here for historical weather maps. And uh, you kind of need to open this up, but it's uh, just to kind of see. it in, in the title up here, it says War Department Weather Map. And I just think that is so cool. So this one, uh, the caption reads that this map was in 19, excuse me, 1871. Okay, uh, this weather map, 1872. And you can see these, we've been talking about isopleths, and you can see these, um, I would imagine that they are isobars. So uh, connecting lines of equal